Hello everyone, we're here today to show you how to program one door station and two monitors all through the computer. Um, one door station here, two monitors, they're all powered up on a switch. I've got my computer here, I'm about to show you how to program it. So, um, first things first, if you're programming to a specific network, you need to find three IP addresses that you can use on their network. So, first things first, I do is open my command prompt, type in ipconfig, and that'll show me what my IP address of my computer is, but more importantly, what the default gateway is. Um, I'm going to program this intercom system in a 192.168.1.1 gateway range, um, and I'm going to start starting IP address is going to be the door station IP which is 192.168.1.110 um, and then the two monitors um, I'm going to make them 192.168.1.11 and 112 okay so first of all I'm going to ping 192.168.1.11 to see if there's anything there if there isn't that means I can use it I'll do the same to 112 Again, that can be used as well. So I don't need to use the command prompt um, anymore. I can just open up the config tool. You'll see here, it'll find the three intercom devices, finds the door station and the two monitors. They're all uninitialized. So first things first, you have to initialize all the, the devices. So first of all, I'm gonna initialize the door station. So tick the box, click initialize, initialize, give it a password. So it has to be at least eight characters numbers and letters so just for this exercise I'm doing admin 1234 keeping it simple and put an email address in very important this is how you recover lost passwords or forgotten passwords All right, click initialize select your language which is English all right that's done it says initialized in the status now I'm just going to initialize the monitors. I can do them at the same time. Click initialize. This needs to be a six digit number. I like to keep it simple. So six eights. So eight 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 eight. Okay, and then sales intercom. You. Okay, language, English, and they've been ticked and they're done. Now, whenever you initialize the door station, as you can hear, it's now rebooted, and that is just the tamper alarm going off. We'll continue. So from the config tool here, I can then click on the Internet Explorer symbol to go to its web page. And then one, two, three, four. So the first thing I do on this intercom is I actually program the door station. So first place I go to is local setting, and I change this villa call number. I change this to just one. All right, so that's gonna be the, call, the room number for the monitor is just one. All right. Um, the next tab here is a video audio page where you can actually see the image of the door station. You um, you can do all sorts of things on this page but if you scroll down the second half you can disable the lock sound you can disable the tamper alarm you can disable the voice prompting here as well um, just for this exercise I'm going to disable the tamper um, just because I don't want it to keep going off and on again every time I reboot the door next page here on the left here is the access control page I like to go into here into the local setting which is a this is for the lock release um, I like to change this to five seconds. This is what it used to be back in the day. And then click save. And then probably more importantly than anything, I like to check the time. Because the time of the door station is what will be broadcast over the whole system. So no matter how much you change the time on the monitors, it'll always follow what the door station time is. All right, so I'm just gonna enter in the NTP details here. Okay, I normally click sync to PC and then I enable the daylight saving time. 
you don't have to enable the daylight saving time, but I just find it's good practice too. Alright, I normally always just go to another tab and then I go back to the system tab just to make sure it's keeping the right time. It's always good practice. Alright, local settings page that is now done. Uh, the next page I go to is household setting. Okay, so this VTO number is an ID number of the door station. Um, not very relevant um, just for one door, but it does become more relevant when you've got multiple doors. Um, go down to room number management. So you need to create a database. So at the moment it's defaulted to the numbers that Darwa put in here, but I get rid of them. Press the X on the first one, it actually clears the whole database out. And you click add. The actual room number sequence, for the master monitor it's one hash zero. And then for the extension off the master, it's one hash one. All right, and then that is actually it. So the door station is now programmed. I'm ready to roll. Um, I now go back to the config tool and I now will change the IP addresses of these monitors. So first things first, if you click up on the search setting here, I need to change this password to the password of the devices I want to change. So I'm changing the password here to 68, so 888888, because that's the password of the monitors. Then I highlight them, and then click on Modify IP and put in the, and put in the starting IP range, which is 111. You'll see you get two ticks. If you refresh the config page, you'll see now that you've got a nice 111, 112 there, okay? Next things first, so this is brand new for Dawa, is to click on the single point. So you click on this page here on the project configuration tab, and then click on single point. This is where we can actually log in to each monitor. So if I tick the first monitor, I put in the username, which is admin, and the password, which is 68, so 123123, and then click login you'll see it actually logs into the product and we can actually put in all the basic numbers that the monitor needs to actually communicate to the door and get, get it online. So one hash zero for the room number and then we've got to put in these details here for SIP server and actual main VTO door station IP. So because I've left the door station default um, I don't have to actually change any of these things but in the SIP realm, this needs this is very important. Type in VDP and then the username and password of the door station. Alright, so I've, I've made the door station password admin 1234. Enable status is already ticked. Then we go down here. So if the door station is going to be a front door or front gate, you can actually input that data here. So I'm going to make it a front door. I'm changing the password of the door station to admin1234 and tick the enable status. And then once you've confirmed all these details are correct, you click save and then it'll come up saying config successful. You click OK, untick here and then we want to log into the next door station. Oh, sorry, next monitor. Here we go, so I've logged into 112. This is slightly different because it's an extension off the master. So we're actually making this one hash one. And then here where it says main VTH, we're actually gonna change it to sub VTH. The host IP is the host is the IP address of the master monitor. All right, so I'm changing that to triple one. And I'm gonna make sure this is the right password for the master monitor. So 192.168.1.111 is the master monitor's IP password of the master monitor and then all of these details remain the same as the first one that we just did. And enable status, one, two, three, four. And then we click, and once we're confident that that is all correct, click save. 
config successful. All right, so now that that is, now that I'm confident that all of those monitors have been programmed correctly, um, we can do two things. We can actually check physically on the monitors, but we can also check in here in this status menu of the, in the household setting of the web browser the door station. So you'll see here now one monitor has already come online. Um, we just have to, I just keep changing from tab to tab to refresh this status page. Um, what we can also do here is you'll see on the monitors they'll still be in a quick, they'll be still asking for a quick configuration. We just press cancel on both monitors. Oh, that one's come on already. All right, we click, keep refreshing this tab. Got to wait for that second monitor to come on. It's just taking a bit longer. If I'm glad this has come up. If we do have this issue on site, we can actually force the door, the monitor to come online if we actually log into it, onto it itself. You hold the settings icon down until it prompts you for a password. That gets you into the project setting. So. Three, one, two, three. Press OK. Now to force this monitor to come online, just click on the VTO config page. You can see it's actually brought all the data in. It just hasn't physically come online yet. You just toggle these statuses off and on. Then I go to the SIP server and do the same thing. It should actually force it to come online. Just wait a few seconds. Also wait here, I'm just going to toggle this. And yep, so it has come online here in the door station now. It says it's offline, but it has actually connected to it. So, Darwa recommend that if you don't want to do this toggling on and off, um, if you just wait 10 minutes, it actually will come on on itself. Alright, so, I'm just going to try this again. Go. So it's come online, so everything's online. We now retab here, go back to your status page, it'll actually tell you here it's totally the system is totally online and ready to work. And that's how do we that's how we do a one to two. Thank you very much and please look at check us out online. Thank you.